Today we're going on a journey through the Halo games and we're going to be unlocking some of the more rare achievements that most people didn't get. For this achievement you have to complete the level Halo without entering a vehicle. I've always wanted to do like a little challenge like this but I never knew it was an achievement so I mean I guess this works out perfectly. This first section is normal as can be, you just walk through, you have to walk through this area anyway with no vehicles, so it's pretty much normal. Usually for this area with the Forerunner structure, I would go down there and fight all the enemies, but since we don't need the Warthog drop off, we can just skip this area. We do not need to fight through any of these enemies. So we can save a little bit of time, I guess it kind of evens it out a little bit, like the running and the fighting. So it saves you a little bit of time running through here. Walking through this area is just, I don't know, it's so eerie without the Warthog, you don't have the engine or the marines cheering along it's just like so dark and so like desolate you're just by yourself walking through it's just i don't know i just got a weird feeling walking through this area and in this area i knew we were gonna have a little bit of an issue on i tried jumping over it but the jumping physics in halo 1 is just so odd i could never get behind the jumping in halo 1 it's just so odd for me every time you jump gravity like shuts off and the, just the physics are just super weird in halo 1 to me so i tried to do a grenade jump like a pro and of course it didn't work out no checkpoint we had to restart right from the beginning all right we're back now let's put these pro grenade jumping skills to the test first try boom i told you see i'm a pro i'm a pro what can i say again it's just a little bit eerie going through here activating the bridge and walking over the bridge without a warthog is so odd <laughs> And right on the other side of the Forerunner structure, this is where it was like even more weird. It threw me off so much walking out of here because usually right at this spot when you're coming out of the Forerunner structure, the music cue will play and the vibes are set. But when you're running through with no Warthog, it's just complete silence. All you hear is the birds chirping. It's just like such a weird vibe. We make it to the second Forerunner structure and then this is where we got to rescue all the Marines. Usually during this part, I would hop on the chain gun of the turret and kill everyone so it was a little bit different without the warthog there but then of course they got us hooked up they dropped off another warthog and yeah we can't use it so we just got to trek on on foot and then we make it to the third forerunner structure to rescue some more marines i love it how every single time you run into the marines they're so excited to see you kill all these guys and another warthog we can't use come on guys take the hint there's another warthog sitting in the canyon next door running through this level without a warthog definitely puts things in a different perspective you gotta slow down down. you get to, you get to appreciate the scenery a little bit more and you get to look up at the sky box it's a completely different vibe but you know honestly i suggest you guys to go do this achievement by yourselves it's like a nature walk we make it to the last area where we have to rescue the marines link up with them again fighting off the covenant as they come in with the drop ships and one thing i noticed when the covenant are dropping off listen to what this grunt yells I feel like this has something to do with like them not knowing exactly what Master Chief was going to be as a character because you couldn't see his face. They made that intentional like you didn't see his face so like what if Bungie themselves didn't know what Master Chief was gonna be as a character. I don't know maybe I'm looking too far into it and the grunt and just like sees a Spartan and just yells cyber but I don't know that just gets me thinking. But boom after clearing out that last area we hop into the pelican and mission is over. We get the achievement hell yeah. For this next achievement, we gotta go to Halo 2. We gotta complete a level with only using the Streaking Skull active on Heroic or Legendary. I've never used the Streaking Skull in my gameplay before, so this is definitely interesting because I've never done this before. Immediately right off the start of the mission, I noticed the Skull's effects on me as it's slowly depleting my shields, and the only way to get those shields back is to get a kill. So I took the Warthog because I feel like the tank would be way too slow and my shields would just be completely drained the entire time, so I'm just not about that. So I took the Warthog to be speedy with it. Going over the bridge kind of went how I expected. I was low on shields for like the last half of it because the Wraith and the Ghosts were just relentless. And then the Banshees come in and it's just like, geez, man, leave me alone. Get to the tunnel. And this is where it gets a little bit iffy because immediately I got to start looking for some enemies to shoot because my shields are so low. And it doesn't work out because, you know, I suck at the game, but I come up with a genius strategy. Only Halo players would understand this strategy. Just, just take the Warthog, man. Just shove it through. Just take the Warthog. When in doubt, take the Warthog. Can we just admire this Jackal Sniper's aim real quick? Like, bro actually just flicked me. Like, I bet you that Jackal's asking his chat to clip that after that. Holy shit. The classic Halo vehicle strategy never fails me. Just bring the vehicle through and you'll be all right. Getting through this area also taught me about this skull is that the more kills you get, you can actually get overshield as well. I don't think I've seen Master Chief with overshield on in Halo 2, so that's pretty cool. We're going for a bonus achievement. On this level, there's another achievement where you have to shoot 
shoot the soccer ball and if you didn't know about the soccer ball you're living under the halo rock it's like the classic halo 2 easter egg on this level along with the scarab gun so i was trying to think of ways i can get onto that roof and the only way i could think of is backtracking and seeing if there was a way over there that i can like go up and around i don't know i was able to get on this ledge it didn't work out for me so i was like you know what we're gonna try something else so the next best thing was activating a skull. I wasn't about to do the whole banshee hijack thing where you take the banshee through the tunnel, like the classic way of getting scarab gun. Like that's just, that is so much. I've tried it before. I was not about to spend three hours again. The Sputnik skull decreases the mass of every single object. So it makes you go flying. That's perfect for grenade jumps. And that's exactly what we need to get into that building. So we get back to that section of the level again, and I don't have enough shield to get the grenade jump because of course the other skull is draining my shield actively. So I don't have enough shield. So I have to try to kill some enemies in order to regain my shield in order to get up there. But of course the Marines kept flying in and stealing my kills. The one time I didn't want the Marines to be efficient. I tried to ram the Marines in order to slow them down down so that I can like get some kills before they steal them all but it didn't work out so I just had to go to the next part of the level and get the kills so I can regen my shields in order to do that grenade jump but yeah I suck a grenade jump so there's that too and finally a grenade jump I'm proud of gets me up there and then we're just able to scale this little piece of the destroyed building and then right around the corner is the soccer ball shoot the soccer ball shoot that shit and boom achievement done little side quest thrown in there back to the main quest this next part honestly had me some trouble because I just kept getting low on shields over and over again every time i would try to regen my shield it just didn't work out for me there was no enemies there or the wraith would just shoot me out of fucking nowhere and look at this you got the marine driving me a whole like kilometer away from like what the fuck are you doing marine seriously respectively what are you doing but we finally make it through that whole section get up there rescue the marines and then we hop on to the scarab and rain some hell on the dumbass coveys i knew i wasn't going to be too worried about this last part because the more people you kill the more regens your shields it was just like a shooting range going through this area there was just enemy after enemy after enemy so i was just consistently getting shields back so boom it was perfect and oh no why didn't the achievement unlock yeah that's right i forgot that it said you had to do it with only that skull on so i had to go all the way back through the mission just without the sputnik skull switched on so I, I guess doing that little side quest just fucked me over but you know it's fine it's fine it's fine we got the achievement we got it we got it we're fine collect the librarian toy in uprising i've only collected like one of these toys in master chief collection and that was the one on delta halo but i've never done any of the other ones so for this one you just gotta drive through the level like normal hop in a ghost and then right here to the right when you reach this area you just gotta hop out and try to parkour up the side of the mountain but for me, I suck at parkour, of course, so uh, I struggled a little bit, as with everything. But then I remember that the ghost in this game is like two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's like your all-terrain vehicle. Blast up the side of here, and then you just stick to the right, walk along this little canyon, and then boom, librarian toys sitting right there. I don't know why this achievement's so rare. It was so easy. People just don't really care for it, I guess. <laughs> In Halo 3 ODST, finish any level solo on Legendary with no shots fired or any grenades thrown. Seems easy, right? Right? Yeah, that's what I thought too. So I hopped on this level and yeah, I struggled a, a, a bit, a lot. I, I gave up. That's that's for sure. Teari Plaza was just not the level for this. It was just enemy after enemy and there was nothing I could do. I was eating those bullets for a bit, but it wasn't enough. I gave up. I went on to the other level, Uplift Reserve. This is perfect because you don't even have to shoot in this level. You just get in the Warthog and drive i've done this level on legendary so many times because you just get in and drive but upon reaching the end of the level uh yeah having a gunner in the passenger seat counted as me shooting i don't know it just doesn't make sense to me because when i was just playing halo 2 doing that other achievement my gunner getting kills didn't count for me getting shield back so i i don't know man just keep it consistent across the games make up your mind if it's gonna count or not so yeah we gotta go through the whole level again but this time leaving the gunner behind so we just gotta hop in the warthog by ourselves this time at the start and it was a little more difficult than i thought i thought i was just gonna be able to fly through there and speed past them like i've always done but man that wraith in that chopper holy shit they just didn't leave me alone the best bet for this area was patience i just waited for them to scoot out and then i just went flying right through them and then there was a conveniently placed ghost for me so that was perfect as well i was able to zoom everywhere whoever put that ghost there thank you no matter how many times I watch in-game sequences like this, it never gets old. It's just so cool, and the lore behind it too, like, oh man. What the hell just happened? The rest of the level was pretty much normal, other than the ghost being a fragile piece of shit. Alright, that's harsh. We all love the ghost. We all love the ghost. I'm sorry. Fly through the exit of the zoo with the ghost, and boom, just like that, achievement unlocked. 
fly a pelican and a phantom on the mission New Alexandria. This achievement's a really cool easter egg they added back in the day for Halo Reach, where you could actually fly the pelican and the phantom, and this was the first time you could ever fly them in the Halo series. I'm surprised I haven't gotten this one in Master Chief Collection yet. I know for sure I've gotten it in Halo Reach, but not in Master Chief Collection. So you're just gonna have to run through the mission just like normal, do all the side objectives and the main objectives, flying through the city. When you reach this area and complete this objective, make sure you grab a jetpack. You're gonna need it. Alright, now that all the jammers are done, we have to fly to this building right over here on the other side of Club Herrera. It's like right on the other side. You have to park the Falcon perfectly right in this little corner. Jump on top of it. There's a little button on the ceiling you gotta jetpack up to, and this is where the jetpack comes in handy. After activating the button, you gotta fly all the way over to this arch looking building. And then you just gotta fly through it. And then that's it. You, you become the Pelican. Now that we're flying the Pelican, we have to fly the Phantom in order to unlock the achievement. Honestly, this is where the hard part comes in. Hijacking a Banshee. In order to fly the Phantom, you gotta hijack a Banshee and fly it through that archway, just like you did with the Falcon. And I had a little bit of a difficulty trying to hijack the Banshees. They were just so annoying, like perfectly flying away from me. Like, dude. And after like a dozen tries of trying to hijack a Banshee, I was finally able to do it. And if you die, you have to make sure to go activate the button again. And I died a couple times. So flying all the way back to the button, activating it and then flying to try to find a banshee it was just a whole process now that i'm in the banshee we gotta fly through the archway and now we're flying a phantom and this is actually so cool i love this easter egg so much and it makes it even cooler that it's an achievement you can earn some gamer score for just doing something cool the only time you were able to fly a phantom or a pelican in Bungie's era of Halo games. And I think they nailed it. For it being just an easter egg, the controls are literally perfect. In my opinion, they're, they're better than the 343 Pelican in Halo 4. Like, seriously. After unlocking the achievement, I was just flying around out of bounds. It unlocks all of the boundaries so you can fly anywhere you want. So I was just taking the sights in, flying all around the city. It's so sick. I love it. There you have it, there is unlocking rare achievements in Halo. If you enjoy this kind of style of video, leave a like and drop a comment for more games you'd like me to unlock rare achievements in. Recently, I'm just on a mission to boost up my gamer score and I thought might as well turn it into something fun. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.